Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk NBA Finals. Let me just say, I believe that the Celtics are the best team in the league, and I believe the Celtics win this series. I don't believe it's a sweep. I think the Celtics are going to be tested. I'm expecting the Celtics to cut down the nets after Game 6 or Game 7. That's how I think it turns out. But of course, that's just the beginning of our betting analysis because we're still going to bet props that would imply that the Dallas Mavericks win the series. Right? We're just looking for the best props because no one can predict the future with 100%. So what I want people to do first is to look at the following two props. Celtics, of course, are an overwhelming favorite. They're going off at better than a minus 200. Uh, but the Celtics in six games... You're getting a plus 437. Celtics, of course, are excellent on the road. The Celtics in seven games, you're getting a plus 392. I believe you want to grab both of those here. Right? Let's talk about some other props. Now, an argument can be made that Luka Doncic is playing the best ball of any player on either of these teams. But, before you grab Luka at plus 205 to win MVP, in the event that the Mavericks pull the upset, let me make the case to avoid that bet and to instead bet the Mavericks simply to win. If you're thinking Luka has a shot at MVP, the Mavericks simply to win at a plus 174. Right? Understand, a plus 205 isn't that much better than a plus 174, especially when you have a guy on Luca's team who already has a ring and who can dominate parts of the game. Kyrie Irving, there is a distinct possibility that Dallas pulls off the upset and it's because of Kyrie Irving Right? Understand, Jordan, when he came in the league, was full throttle all the time at first. Then Jordan got better. And Jordan figured out, as his career progressed, that his team had a better chance of winning if he let other guys touch the ball in the first quarter. Right? Jordan actually started passing the ball in the first quarter to get the Craig Hodgeses of the world, involved in the game. But, of course, down the home stretch, Jordan wanted the ball. Now, Kyrie Irving is that Robin-type figure who's actually co-Batman, right? Understand, Kyrie Irving played in NBA Finals with LeBron James. He understands that he has arguably the best handle in the league and he down the stretch can take over the game particularly in the second half of games so this is that ginger rogers type character who lets luca be luca but is prepared to take over the game when he has to right before this iteration of kyrie the older Kyrie would let LeBron be LeBron. But if you look at key games in the finals, right, the one game they beat Kevin Durant, Kyrie scored something like 40 in that game. The game where they eliminated the Golden State Warriors, right, ended their 73 win season. Kyrie scored big baskets. Because there is a distinct possibility that the Mavs could win 
but the MVP not be Luka. The MVP be Kyrie. I don't believe Luka for MVP is as good a set of bets as taking the Mavericks simply to win at a plus 174 and further taking Kyrie Irving. This is a market mispricing at better than 22 to 1 odds right now to be MVP of the NBA Finals. Right, folks? Kyrie is that figure who can step out of the shadows and take over a series. Let me point out, too, that there's going to be heightened attention on Kyrie because of his history with the Boston Celtics. Right? You can imagine a scenario where Kyrie's out on the court. It's midway through the fourth quarter. The crowd is booing him. Even if you don't know anything about the history of Kyrie and the Celtics, you then start focusing on Kyrie. You're like, wow, why is the crowd booing him like this? And you could see Kyrie, and I'm telling you, this is the personality. Deliver. This is the guy who can be in a tornado. And if he needs to get that bucket, if he needs to drive on guys without giving up the dribble, go down the lane in a sea of taller men and get the bucket, this is the guy who has the fortitude to do it. Kyrie Irving is a closer. Right? Understand, too, Luka's a bit combative. Luka's a guy who argues with referees. If Luka's in foul trouble, you could easily see a scenario where Luka's on the bench and Kyrie has to take over and does, right? So rather than take Luka at a plus 205 to win finals MVP, that's as you're hedging up a Boston to win the series bet. I would suggest you rethink it. I would suggest you take the Mavs simply to win at a plus 174. Right? That's well north of even money. And then you sprinkle some on Kyrie Irving to win the MVP at 22 to 1. He's going off at a 2207 right now. Right? A little bit better than 22 to 1. That's where you want to sprinkle some for big game purposes. Let me uh, also say too. Stay away from the Dallas plus a game and a half prop. Right? They're giving you a minus 125 on that. So you would get, you know, Dallas, if the series makes it into the later games. Well, let me, let me just point out that that's not enough because you're getting a plus 174 on the Mavs simply to win. You're also getting a plus 437 on Celtics in six and a plus 392 on the Celtics in seven. Right? Let me close by saying this. I thought the Celtics would lose at least one game against the Pacers. I lost that bet. But understand who the Celtics are. The Celtics should have lost the first game of that series. They were at home. And of course, they were down. They needed a three to send that game into overtime with less than 10 seconds left. Jalen Brown, who's not their best three-point shooter, was the guy who took the three-point attempt from the corner. He hit the shot. Right, That series is very different if that shot, which had a less than 50% chance of going in, missed. Right, The Celtics then took over, did not look back in OT. The Celtics were behind in several of those Pacer games in the second half of games. It's my philosophy, it's my belief, even after losing that Pacer bet, that these Celtics are not... Jordan's Bulls. 
right? They are not the big red machine of baseball. They're not the Moses Malone, Philadelphia 454 76ers, right? These Celtics will bomb in a game. Jason Tatum, as great a star as he is, in my opinion, is a streak shooter. There are going to be some games where he can't buy a three. Jalen Brown's offense is somewhat predictable. He needs to drive. Right? We don't know how ready to play Porzingis is. What we do know is that basketball is a chemistry sport. And I believe it's going to take a game or two for the Celtics to adjust to Porzingis' return. So I get the feeling, for no reason other than, these are the Jason Tatum Boston Celtics. I get the feeling that there's going to be a game in this series that the Celtics give away. Because that's who they are. Right? This is not a... Again, Dr. J, Moses Malone type team where they put their foot on your neck and they're going to try to stomp you out every game. That's not these guys, right? So even though I think the Celtics are better than Dallas, right? I do believe that they're going to have some problems, right? Let me say this too, and it's really a tribute to Luca. You know, I've watched Luca over the year, and Luca is not defensively blessed, nor is he a freak athlete, right? But understand, he's one of the best players I have ever seen. He is a guy who can beat you one-on-one. -on -one. That turnaround jumper that he has, that's an unstoppable shot. Right? Unstoppable. Luca is a better passer than you think. Luca also is that guy who, in big games, can actually play some defense. And, of course, Luca has range. Where he can be several feet behind the three-point line. Dead on. Right? He, he doesn't need to be off at the side. He can be dead on looking at the rim. And he can hit shots like that. Now, a guy like Luca does not require much to beat you. This is a situation that's kind of like Jordan. Luca is more of a one on one player than LeBron. I'm just telling you my layperson's assessment of the talent level here. Right? Luca led the team, excuse me, Luca led the league in scoring this year. Right? Understand. You really can't stop him. One-on-one, -on -one, if you come up on him, Luca can shorten his dribble and knows how to shield you from the basketball. Right now, a guy like this, and I know it's counterintuitive, but even against the Tatum, a Jalen Brown, with all the three-point shooters that the Celtics have, in fact, even with the defensive stalwarts the Celtics have, right? White, Drew Holiday, uh, Luca is a guy who's still going to get his points, right? This is that rare, and I mean rare, Jordan figure who just needs a team around him who can get defensive stops, and he'll take over the rest of the burden even if it requires a triple-double. In the series that just ended against the Minnesota Timberwolves, it's simply shocking how much Luka out-rebounded Carl Anthony Towns. Right? I mean, understand, while under the basket had a lot of nip and tuck, a lot of shoving, while under the basket was rough and tumble, somehow Luka Doncic was able to get an inordinate amount of rebounds. Now, in a final series where they're going to shorten the rotation, a guy like this, 
is going to be more of a problem than you think, right? The secret to Jordan was that everyone knew their roles and people understood at the end of games, Jordan would have the basketball. Now, I'm just telling you, this is a different scenario than, let's say, Joker. Joker is more of a LeBron type. He's lifting the team. Right? You know, Joker's a guy who is a great passer like Luca is. But Luca's bringing a different dynamic where Luca is the team. You add in Kyrie, who also can be the team. In other words, can take over to the point where in a fourth quarter, either of them can score 15 points. That's what we're talking about. And you understand that this series is much more competitive than the math suggests. Understand too, and people here on YouTube pointed this out to me, you cannot compare this Dallas Maverick team to the defensively challenged Dallas Maverick team of the first four months of this NBA season. Right, folks? This team with these bigs, this level of athleticism, um, that now are clicking. They're much more competitive than you think. I think the series goes six or seven games. That's how I'm playing it. Understand, if we get to game five and the Celtics look like a juggernaut and are up 3-1 and you feel for whatever reason, let's say Luca's having a bad series, Kyrie's having a bad series, um, Lively's injury resurfaces. Whatever reason, if you feel that the Celtics have the upper hand, at that point you can take the Celtics to win game five. Right? What do you want to do here right now, at least what I'm doing, is grabbing game six and seven. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.